is the technical difficulties we're playing citation needed. Joining me today, he reads books. You know, it's Chris Joel. Hello. <laughs> Everybody's favourite, Gary Brannan. Gary Brannan. It <laughs> <laughs> and the bounty's man on the internet, Matt Gray. Bienvenue, YouTube! Ooh. Ah, <laughs> bien. <laughs> In front of me, I've got an article from Wikipedia, and these folks can't see it. Every fact they get right is a point and a ding, and a special prize for particularly good answers, which is. Mystery Biscuits! Oh, yeah. And today we are talking about Atomic Annie. Oh. oh! Is it a terrible way to teach people how to do resuscitation? <laughs> <laughs> now, children, after the bombs fall, you may find that the person you're resuscitating has bad breath. <laughs> Am I guessing it's not an atomic rushy... Rush, <laughs> Put your teeth in, try it one more time. Resusian. No, it's not. Who it, is a real person? Who what? is it? Resusian. You know, the, 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 the thing you use when you're doing resuscitation... Practice the face. Oh, so you can walk down the street. Oh, I recognise you from. Well, oh. <laughs> let, us, let us cast our minds back to 18th. I think it's no, it must be 19th century Paris or early 20th century Paris, whatever. <laughs> Who noticed that, that she had that decade. weird click when you pressed a chest? <laughs> and what were they doing? I, you know, she was a dead body pulled out the Seine, right? <laughs> No, no. Yeah, yeah. Mm. No, the Rishusian is based on an unidentified corpse that was pulled out of the Seine and they cast the face. And the person, this is where it gets grim. The person who did the, or something yeah, like that. Because person before that, it was a bucket no. of fucking laugh. No, this is just a Thursday night in Paris so far. <laughs> They pulled the body out and whoever was doing the autopsy thought she was so beautiful, they made a cast of her face. And that is the face that is used on the Rishusian dolls. Mr. Oh, yeah. I'm not giving you any points because it's not even remotely related to the subject. <laughs> but you are entirely right. Yeah. By a process of elimination, we know what it isn't, though, eh, Sherlock? <laughs> it's like someone came along and went, now that's a fit corpse. Yeah. No. <laughs> My God, no. when you put it that way, yeah. yeah. I want to raise the question of the clicking noise. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you are absolutely right. A, a young woman whose death mask became a fixture on the walls of artists' homes. Yeah. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Is it in the testing sites? Is it the fridge that Indiana Jones went in? <laughs> no, that's Atomic Smeg, which raises more questions yet again. <laughs> it is certainly military hardware, but you're not close enough to, to get a point here. Is it when they tried to power a plane with a nuclear reactor in the 50s? Oh no! Holy Damn it! Shit. What really? What was that? I haven't got. Uh... Um, it was when when that when atomic power was the way of the future. It would harm no one. Uh, uh, did you not see what we just did, guys? Anyway, um, yeah, they were building sort of nuclear reactors down to I presume like the size of this stage, and they put one in a. Well, it must have been a B twenty nine. Oh, it was a B thirty six. Sorry, it must have been a B thirty six. Cut that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they made a nuclear powered aeroplane. And I don't think it worked because they stopped doing it. Ain't that an episode of Thunderbirds? They never actually connected the engines to the propeller. Now that's where they went wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that would be why it didn't work. That would be why it didn't work. I'm not a scientist. I've but turned both bits on. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> There's some dude stood in the middle of the plane going, huh? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Have a go. Oh no, metric and imperial. <laughs> There's one thing that too much science fiction has taught me is that going like that immediately results in a load of sparks and you're going, ah! Yeah, but you're fine. Yeah, but it might have taken yeah. off. Yeah. You've saved something. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so it's stuck off the block. No, no, this is off. the longest we've ever been stuck with. No. Is it a Blondie album? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's an atomic something. It's ground-based ordnance here. Cannon. Point. Oh, you are absolutely ground right. Ground-based ordnance. Cannon. <laughs> trebuchet <laughs> atomic trebuchet <laughs> oh. bloody are hell you firing, could are you firing atomic things or is this just a massive atomic power it's threat? an atomic power thing that fires atomic kitten <laughs> that'll go for miles I don't know <laughs> but only when the tide is high <laughs> <laughs> atomic kitten songs <laughs> Because if you're going to fire it at something, it'll make a hole again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and cause an eternal flame. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Chris, Chris, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay, it's another atomic. I can't believe that's the first time I've done the war cannon. <laughs> <laughs> so the atomic cannon then? Yeah. Hmm. Um, an atomic cannon developed, uh, developed about when? 
Fifties. Tuesday. Wednesday in the fifties. <laughs> <laughs> yes, have a point. Uh, early nineteen fifties. Let me even map the point there. Um, at the beginning of the Cold War. Well, of course it was fifties if it's atomic. They developed for three years. The idea being to make a cannon that would fire a small nuclear device. That's ballsy. <laughs> <laughs> How, how did they get it around? How, I mean, how, Train. Big, how big was this thing? Very. <laughs> Train. Very. <laughs> Bing. I'm giving quicker. <laughs> Correct it. Two treads. Uh, Bigger. Yeah. I'm giving you a point for big, and I'm giving you a point for two. It was two tractors, but yeah, it required two extra long fire trucks to move the thing. Okay. Ooh. It is an 84 ton gun. Did it need to be that big? Yes. If you fire atomic weapons, you want it far enough away that the blast wave doesn't get you, which means it needs to be a big, as previously mentioned. <laughs> yes, you are absolutely right. What, what about what was its effective firing range? Far. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere in three digits of miles. Price is right rules. Six. Miles? I haven't specified a unit. <laughs> I will say 200 miles. Price is right. Go. Six miles? A furlong. <laughs> That's not very far. Because so it might have been a failure, it, ca it came out the top and just went... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which is not great for an atomic device, but no, about 20 miles. Uh, no. uh, point. And they did actually fire this. Where did they fire this? In the desert. I'll give you the point for the desert. The Nevada test site. Yeah, the one, yeah. That you can uh, still go to, weirdly, on a day trip. It's a bit far. <laughs> yeah, they, they do... <laughs> you know, not from here. <laughs> Unless you're going by nuclear cannon, obviously. <laughs> did Bark ever write an atomic cannon? Did what? <laughs> oh, for God's sake. Oh, that's a hell of an organ. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, it's the classical music gags, everybody. <laughs> the test was successful. Uh, they, made, they made 20 of the cannons. They cost what? Me 20? 20? <laughs> what were they planning on doing in the 50s with 20 cannons? Um, shooting the Russians, remember? <laughs> Miles away. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, but, but in all Have fairness, Alaska, <laughs> how, how big is the, the, the land gap between the US and Russia? Drive into an empty bit of Alaska and shell an empty bit of <laughs> Russia. <and just go>. <laughs> 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 Moral f***ing <laughs> victory. <laughs> What you've invented there, Gary, is a really bad intercontinental ballistic missile. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, isn't it, basically? <laughs> yes. Um, but it wasn't just Europe and Russia it was deployed to. Where else would they have sent it to? Did they send it to Korea to shit him up? Yes, they did. <laughs> what were some of the problems with this? Didn't work. <laughs> uh, no, it, it did work. It got all leaves in it. <laughs> Everything that was carrying it went backwards faster than the thing went forwards. When they got there, it wasn't really all that useful. Why not? Because the Russians had invented an atomic super cannon. Yes, it's called an intercontinental ballistic missile. <laughs> <laughs> as, we, as we scientists call it. Yes, you're absolutely right. The better things had been invented. So while they still had it and it was still a prestige weapon, um, they didn't ever actually fire it. In the end, they realised they could just make atomic shells for what? Uh, beaches. <laughs> Any <laughs> artillery piece in the inventory. Exactly <laughs> right. They didn't need the cannon. They could just build a bigger regular cannon and put a nuclear shell in it. Um, there was something else here called the Davy Crockett weapon system. This was an attempt to put a nuclear device in another bit of weaponry. What might this have been? A firework. Oh, we're not back to wedging things in cats, are we? <laughs> <laughs> a sword. <laughs> Drive me closer if I want to hit them with my nuclear sword. Yeah. How would that even work? You perch it on the end, like... The Davy Crockett weapon system. <laughs> Musket. Bullets. And you know what? You're close. It was a recoilless rifle. Ah. So essentially a rocket launcher with a nuclear bomb on the end. And it didn't have any recoil. That, uh, recoilless rifle essentially means the back end is open, so you're basically, oh. basically putting a hollow tube up and the exhaust gas has come out the back. A hollow tuber. <laughs> they're, they're all hollow. That's how they work. Oh, yeah. If they weren't hollow, <laughs> you, you just... <laughs> Solid tuber. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you want to do the gesture? We've all done it once. Come on, get it on there. <laughs> uh, what were some of the problems with this? With a, with a shoulder-mounted rocket launcher? And you you had to carry the ammunition. And it's right next to your head. That didn't have the range to get you out of blast distance. And that's the big one, yes. <laughs> Who the f*** is going to fire it? <laughs> so this is fine, yeah? Yeah, it's fine. It's glowing, you know that, don't you? Yeah, yeah, it's all cool. If this hits that guy, am I dead as well? Yeah, f*** 
<laughs> just <laughs> just yeah. drop it. In fact, just drop it. In fact, <laughs> just drop worse, it. He dies instantly. You get a slow lingering death. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> That's the other problem. <laughs> <laughs> instantly lethal within 150 meters of where it hit. <laughs> Fatal dose within a quarter mile of landing. Just drop it. Just leg it. <laughs> uh, also, what uh, what couldn't you do to the bomb after you fired it? Pick it up. Hug it. Juggle it. Use it again. <laughs> Paint said... a watercolour. <laughs> I said fired, not landed. It's not like you're going to abort it. It explodes with a nuclear bomb. Yes, if it's going to you... get you anyway, it's going to get you sooner if you abort there it. There wasn't an abort option. Mm. No, it's a nuclear bomb. <laughs> You've already fired it. Well, yeah, no, but that's, that's not what sets off a nuclear bomb. Yeah, that's true. That. You, fire, you fire it or you drop it or whatever, and then the timer sets it off. Because nuclear bombs have accidentally fallen out, haven't they? Gone off, but, but if not you've... exploded. Because there's one in, is there one off the coast of Spain or something like that? Oh, don't look up list of nuclear accidents on Wikipedia. Yeah, it's mm. terrifying. Seriously, <laughs> there's, there's certainly one off the waters of I think it's Georgia in the US. So right, yeah, yeah, have a point. Yeah, yeah. But you don't want to turn the timer off because then you've given it to them and they're just going to throw it back to you. <laughs> in oh, the that's post. a good point. Mm. What did yeah. you say in the post? Well, you just set the timer a it's little bit longer. <laughs> you address it in a big box that looks like a birthday cake. You put it in uh, the why mail. Why do you have a box that looks to... like a birthday cake? <laughs> Because th that box that looks like a birthday cake is in a bigger box that looks like the kind of box a birthday cake might come in. Oh, that's me told. <laughs> Inception I'm... boxing. So Are you I'm... a spy and you haven't told us? All right, and then you address it to head of FBI, the Pentagon, happy birthday. And then like your mum always does on birthday cards, do not open until, and he'll go, whoo, for my birthday, it's in a few weeks, puts it in the corner of his office, opens it up, a cake, cuts into the cake, and that's when your timer goes off. Well, don't you get it so then the bomb pops out of the cake and goes, happy birthday, <laughs> Mr. Oh. President. An atomic Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> Talk about a blonde bombshell. Hey! <laughs> really? Really? Yeah, that's your one for the season. Let them clap. <laughs> Oh, that's a beautiful show. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, to be fair, that was that was you bowling it straight down the middle of the crease and me just going, oh, yeah, this is easy. <laughs> you, you, you met it well. Her uh, crease. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, in Britain. <laughs> Um, there is a, a somewhat related, slightly ridiculous weapon Ah, uh, as opposed here. to where we've been perfectly yes. sensible up to now. And it's called Blue Peacock. <laughs> This was a British attempt uh, to create a tactical nuclear weapon. Mm -hmm. uh, they were going to put nuclear mines in Germany. <laughs> um, what's the problem with burying something like that? That's you don't know where the you put it. Is. <laughs> that, that is that is one problem. Yes, one problem with that is that during the winter uh, it gets very cold. The electronics don't work. How do you keep something like that underground warm? What was the plan? Thermos flask. <laughs> <laughs> Sending sheep out to wee on it. <laughs> I'm never going camping with you, ever. <laughs> they did, they, this only needs to last a week or so. So how do you keep that warm for a week? Oil fire. Blankets. No, it's, it's something that's going to generate its own heat for a while. A cat. You are very close. Oh, God. Cows. A uh, bit big to, to bury there with a, with a nuclear They mine. buried animals with the things. The plan was to bury a chicken, so I'm going to give you the point. How? <laughs> who, who goes... Okay, we've got this bomb, this high-tech yep. nuclear thing. Yep, we need to And um, what we warm. need to do is we put it underground, and we need to keep it warm. What do we need to put it on? Oh, chickens! <laughs> so what, so what do you no, no, Jeff, Jeff, we can you... come up with a better... So chickens! chickens. <laughs> so hang on, do you, are we talking a box here with a live chicken in it and an egg-sized nuclear weapon so that the chicken just gives it this number until the timer goes off? That sounds like it'd work. Yeah, actually, that, that, was, that was the plan. It never actually happened. No Isn't way. it a motion detection bomb? And you're putting a chicken, one of the flappiest animals of... <laughs> it's not, no, no. It, it, it doesn't detect itself. So how do you set it off? Do you step how on, do you set it off? Do you well, step on, on the chicken? So, so, right, so you make your box. You put your chicken in your box. And the chicken's in the mine? Yes. Yeah, you, you put your chicken in the box, you put your pressure panel on top, or you... Right, or and so you've you got your... this really, really high-tech thing, and then you put a chicken inside yeah. it because that's what's going to make this high-tech yeah. thing better. <laughs> yes, because it'll keep imagine? it at a working temperature without needing to plug anything into it or keep it running. I sometimes have problems starting my car in the winter. Shall I put a f***ing chicken in the engine? No, just get a yeah. normal chicken. The f***ing ones are too distracting. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine a... Warm, cold, warm, cold, warm, cold. <laughs> 
NATO's retreated that away, right? You approach what is... You won't even signpost it as a minefield, would you? Like, today, you, you would just probably Chicken leave the field. farm. And suddenly... Yeah. <laughs> Free eggs, please come in. In Russian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it says it in English, but in Russian, in brackets, I think. <laughs> but you approach this mysteriously newly dug field that has nothing on it apart from the sound of clucking <laughs> from beneath. <laughs> Well, let's face and it, then, it works doubly then, because you f***ing wouldn't follow him over that field. It's like, <laughs> he's going on here. Back to what is it? Field of ghost chickens. <laughs> <laughs> At which point, one of the chickens has pecked his way out, and suddenly, from beneath the soil, chicken's head just pops out. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's got to do Night of the Living Dead. It's got to be the right wing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> suddenly, irradiated chickens start popping out of the ground all over. And that's before the bomb's gone off. Second proposed, seconded, get them built. Can I, can I just say, Suddenly Irradiated Chicken is the name of my new program. <laughs> <laughs> this time. I like your The Cluck From Below, like it's a horror film. <laughs> the Cluck From Below. New from M. Night Shawadawaddy, The Cluck From Below. Many animals were harmed in the making of this movie. <laughs> so, at the end of the show, congratulations, Matt. Oh. You win this week. Yay! <laughs> Uh, congratulations, you win a rope that keeps out vultures owned by the star of Gavin and Stacey in The Late Late Show. It's James Corden's Condor Corden. So, <laughs> do enjoy that. <laughs> Until then, we say thank you to Chris Joel. <laughs> to Gary Brennan. <laughs> to Matt Gray. Bye-bye. I'm Tom Scott. We'll see you next time. <laughs>